Good afternoon, everybody. Today we are going to start talking about holiday celebrations in colonial America. You may not know this, but Connecticut was really an area of great dispute between the English settlers and the Dutch settlers. The Dutch definitely had their stronghold along the Hudson, and England was more dominant in Connecticut, but there was a struggle back and forth. So today we're going to talk about one of the things that they agreed on, which was Christmas cookies. Now cookies were really something that was special to the holidays. And the reason for that is that the ingredients to make them were very expensive and came from very far away. Chief among these, the spices. When the explorers left Europe looking for the Northeast Passage, they were not looking for the New World. They were looking for a faster way to get to the Spice Islands in Indonesia. They kind of found the New World by accident. All the rage in Europe were spices. Pepper, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg. These were highly, highly valued. And so they became very expensive. The spice trade was lucrative, but dangerous. They either had to go overland or around the Cape of Africa, or after Magellan, they tried going around South America to find another way to the Spice Islands. And we know that Magellan's trip took more than two years. So this became a very, very lucrative trade. And getting spices for Christmas cookies was very expensive. And that is why they were really only made at Christmas. The first thing I have here are cinnamon sticks. This is actually the bark of a cinnamon tree. And cinnamon sticks, the best ones in the world, come from what is now Vietnam. They are very hard. One thing about the spices is that they travel very well. The other thing is that if you are making them fresh or grinding them fresh, they have a much stronger flavor. One of the children in the family would have been tasked with the job of grinding up the cinnamon. The cinnamon would have been put, the stick would have been put into a mortar and pestle. This one is made out of marble. And that child would sit in the corner and use the mortar and pestle on the cinnamon stick until it became a fine powder. This took a lot of doing. The next spice that was commonly used and loved was nutmeg. This is what nutmeg looks like. You've probably only seen it powdered. It's also very hard, but this is not something you would grind up in a mortar and pestle. For this, you needed from your local tinsmith. They did have tinsmiths who made lots of things out of tin, like graters and candle molds. and lanterns, and cookie cutters, and measuring cups, and lots of things that are made out of tin. But our tin today is being used to grind the nutmeg. You rub the nutmeg over the grinder, and what comes out is a very fine powder that we use as nutmeg. It has a wonderful, wonderful smell. The last ingredient that's a spice that we are using today is dried ginger root. Again, ginger keeps for a very long time when it is dried. And again, we would have to grind this with a spice grinder. Again, quite, this one happens to be very, very old. We would grind the ginger over the spice grater. And what is at the bottom is the ginger that we would measure into the cookies. The last thing that made cookies so expensive was white sugar. Sugar always came from the Indies in a cone like this. It came from sugar cane 
and it was a very tough process. Sugar cane is a tall stalk. It had to go through a juicer that would get the brown liquid called molasses out of the sugar cane, and then it had to be refined into white sugar, which always traveled in a block like this. It always came usually in a blue paper with the red seal so you would know it was really sugar. Sugar was so expensive that it was called white gold, and the production of it really fueled the slave trade because there were slaves used in the Sugar Islands to make this sugar. Now the other thing that came out of sugar was molasses. This is the fluid that comes directly out of the sugar cane plant, and it's also used to make rum. Now, sugar made from molasses has been cleaned and washed so many times that white sugar has no nutrients left in it except to be sweet. Molasses still has a lot of nutritious properties to it, but the colonists thought that anything that was refined was better, like refined people and refined sugar and refined flour. And it's really kind of funny because in modern times we know that actually the less refined foodstuffs are, the more nutritious they are. So since Connecticut was really more English than Dutch, I'm gonna start with a recipe that is from Colonial Williamsburg. And of course the original recipe has different measurements and this has been, char this has been changed to fit modern society. The original recipe called for pounds of flour and pounds of sugar and so forth. But what we're making today are called ginger cakes. So in the bowl, I have eight tablespoons of butter that I've let come to room temperature. And to that, I am going to add dry ingredients that I have already measured out. So I have in here two and a half cups of flour, two thirds of a cup of sugar, some salt, baking soda, again, the ginger, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, and I'm gonna add that together. And I'm just gonna mix it up. Remember, we're trying to get a cookie dough here. Now the real difference here is that I'm now going to pour in molasses, it's half a cup of molasses, and two tablespoons of heavy cream, which have been heated together to mix them. And I wanna get every last drop. We never waste anything in Colonial America. So I'm getting all the molasses out and I perp they wouldn't have had a glass jug like this, but I just did that so you can see that molasses is brown. And I'm just mixing this until I have a nice cookie dough. I'm blending in the butter and the molasses and the flour. I've now mixed my flour and molasses and spices into a nice cookie dough. And I'm going to roll it out with my rolling pin. my tin cookie cutter, cut out a circle. And I'm gonna cut as many circles as I can and lift them and put them on to a plain regular plate. Because remember, they did not have ovens like we use now that you can figure out exactly and set the oven to 350 degrees and time it for 20 minutes. Some people had a beehive oven 
in which they could bake. But mostly to bake something, you would use what is called a Dutch oven. And this is a Dutch oven. It is standing on a trivet. And these things are made out of cast iron. I would take this plate of cookies, place the plate and everything right inside the Dutch oven, like that. And I'd take it over to my hearth or fireplace, scoop some coals out of the fire, put them under the trivet, put the Dutch oven with the cookies inside above the hot coals, and then I would scoop some more hot coals into the top of the Dutch oven. And since this is also iron, it would heat evenly because there was heat coming from above and heat coming from below, and the iron itself gets hot and it bakes the cookies. That is how most cookies would have been baked. They might have had a larger Dutch oven so they could make more than four at a time. But the way to really make a big batch of cookies would be to have a brick oven built into your fireplace, which was also called a beehive oven, but not everybody had one. So this was another way to bake the cookies. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the Dutch cousins. The Dutch also loved cookies for Christmas and would use a very similar recipe, but they called it speculaus. And the difference with speculaus cookies is that instead of just making plain round cookies, they would use cookie presses to put designs into the cookie dough. Speculaus cookies were made with cookie presses. Some of them were small, most of them were made at home, and they were pretty rustic. Here you can see one that is the design of a bear, if you look carefully. And this one has a woman and a man. They would also have one of Saint Nicholas. And the Dutch really celebrated St. Nicholas Day, which was December 6th. And that's where the whole idea of Santa Claus came from. To make a speculaus cookie, you would make your dough and then press the cookie press into the dough to get a print. It would be a good idea to oil this a little bit first so that it wouldn't stick. But if you think about the combination of the ginger cookies that I talked about first and the speculaus cookies that I'm talking about now and the fact that Connecticut was a Dutch and English colony during different times in the colonial period, you will begin to understand where our modern gingerbread men come from that we always make at Christmas. They're one of our Christmas symbols. We see them all over the place at Christmas and people traditionally still make gingerbread men and give them away at Christmas time. Thanks for joining me today. See you soon.